Proudly sponsored by Hingyo, truck and trailer spares and hydraulic whip. Genesis 12. From verse 2 where it says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So I'm speaking about the Great Commission. I'm speaking about global evangelization. I'm speaking about the message of God being pro proclaimed across the globe. And in order for you to understand this message, a lot of you guys are wondering, but why are we here? Why are we here sharing the gospel with people? In order to understand that, we've got to jump all the way back to this piece of scripture over here. Now, in this scripture it says, you will be a blessing. You will bl uh, you, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. I want you to understand that at the Tower of Babel, we all know that story, Tower of Babel, what did God do? He confused the languages and the people scattered. Do you know what went scattering over there? The nations. The nations. Now I'm going to shoot through to the New Testament. I'm going to go to Matthew. Um, Matthew 24. Matthew 24 verse 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Now watch this. That word nations, translated, means ethnic people group. In your language, Afrikaans, it means stum. Nasi, but you can stum. Tribe. So if you wonder... What is a tribe? We're talking about Koza, Nama, Dama, Ku, Kwe, Zulu. That's a tribe. So Jesus says that this gospel, what is gospel? Good news. This good news will be preached to all nations, to all tribes, to all ethnic people groups. Watch this. And then the end will come. <laughs> Hang on. I'm about to challenge your belief of the end times. I know we pray, Lord Jesus, come. And we must. But I want to say to you that we haven't reached all the nations. And Jesus isn't coming until we have. Now we jump back to Abraham in Genesis 12. Abraham, I'm going to bless you. Abraham, I'm going to bless you. These nations have gone out from the Tower of Babel. These are unreached nations, ethnic people groups. And Abraham, I'm going to change you. You're going to be converted. You're going to become Abraham. And from you will be born a people, that's the Hebrew people, a nation, the Israelites. And that nation is going to learn to know me. I'm going to reveal myself to them. They're going to learn my character, they're going to learn about me, they're going to get to know me. And then they are going to rub shoulders with all those other tribes and nations. And that's how we're going to reach them. And God even goes and He places Israel in a strategic place, Jerusalem. If you were traveling from North Africa through to Asia, you had to go through God's people. If you traveled from Asia to North Africa or to Europe or that way, you would need to brush shoulders with God's people. And what would those pagan nations see? Those people who worship many gods. How many gods have you got in your life right now? What would they see? They would see the worshiping of the one true God. They would see love. They would see discipline. They'd see order, because God is a God of order. They would see people living according to His statutes. They would see the institution of marriage. One man, one wife. They would see family. And that's the stuff that they would see, and that is what would change them. Now, was Israel always obedient? No. And we see that in an example the heart of Jonah. You know the story of Jonah and the whale? Or the big fish? Yeah. Jonah, go to Nineveh. No, I'm not going there. They don't deserve you. He was disobedient. I think God forced him to go. Okay? 
And when he went there, we saw the conversion of a nation. Because he went and because he proclaimed God. And that is how this great commission, this reaching out to people started. It started way back there. God was the first missionary. It's God's mission. And he calls all of us to be part of his mission. Not all of us are called to be missionaries, but all of us are called to be part of his mission. So if you become a school teacher, then there where you are, you represent him. And you're busy with his mission. If you become a businessman and you're funding missions, you're funding the evangelization, or evangelization of the nations, then you are part of his mission. You reaching out to your neighbor, you're part of God's mission. Before I travel to this, these countries, I say to my wife, lock the doors. If anything happens to me, phone these numbers. I love you. I go to the kids, I say, I love you. You know, it's before I leave, I say these important things. Agreed? So Jesus says, before his ascension, he says, go and make disciples of all. What does that nations mean? Ethnic people groups. What's a disciple? He's a follower of Jesus, a student Amen. of Jesus. Go make all the tribes students of Jesus. Jesus. That's what it means. That's what it means. Then you go to Mark. And once we jump to the book of Mark, Jesus goes and says the following. Five times Jesus says to us, go. He says, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. That's twice. We shoot to, Mark, uh, to Luke, Luke 24. Luke 24. And repentance... And forgiveness of sins will be preached in His name to all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem. John. John 20. twenty twenty one. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Acts 1 verse 8. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness. Do you know what that means? word means? Martyr. Matiero, my martyr. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. How many more times do you want to hear Jesus say to you, go? You guys are all here to clean up your lives and to be disciples, students of Jesus. Agreed? Yes. Students of Jesus. That means your disciple is speaking to you. Five times he says go. He gave Abraham the great commission back then already. And yeah, Jesus is affirming it. Jesus is just continuing with this job. And he invites us to be part of it. And now I'll go to Matthew and this is one of the favorite pieces, Matthew 5, favorite pieces of Scripture for me, where Jesus is talking about salt and light. And He says, you are the salt of the earth. And I want to bring it in with my message, the previous message. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled on by men. What does salt do? Give me one thing. What, what do you use salt for? Food. What does it do? It gives flavor. The world has no flavor. People are dying. People are addicted. People are hurting. People are depressed. People are sad. That means no flavor. A lot of you don't have flavor in your lives. And Jesus is saying, be the salt. Us, believers, go and be the salt. This will salt yes. up flavorless lives. What else does salt do? Salt preserves you put it on meat, it preserves it. It makes it last. If this salt reaches your life, you will be preserved unto eternity. Amen. What else does salt do? Salt heals. If you have a wound that is passing and oozing and, and it does not look good, and you take it and you open that up and you scrub it, that hurts, eh? 
The cleaning up process, guys, hurts, yes. just by the way. Yes. All right? Becoming a Christian hurts. Yes. Okay? It's awesome, but it hurts because you've got to break ties. You've got to lose friends. People will reject you. And that's okay because they, they don't understand, man. And they're consumed by their sins. They're corrupted by it. And then you take salt and you put salt in that wound. And it brings about healing. That's what the gospel does. It heals you. It heals you. It does. Remember I said that we have to go and reach the nations, tribes. And then the end will come. Matthew 24, 14. Probably one of the most important verses you'll ever learn. Matthew 24, 14. That this gospel must be preached to all nations. And then the end will come. Is he here yet? So what does that tell you? Yeah, it definitely means we must go. But, but there's a question we should be asking. We should be saying, well, how many tribes are there? How many tribes are there? There's over 16,000 tribes on this planet. The next question you should be asking me is, how are we doing? How many have we reached? How many must we still reach? We have to still reach over 6,000 tribes. That means there are really people out there who've never heard about His first coming. Because for, to be considered reached, there must be believers, there must be a planted church, they must be reproducing. And we've got a problem. The Bible says... The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. How much more scripture do we want? The story is all just fitting in awesomely together. You see, God does what is humanly impossible. You must do what is humanly possible. So, you're not getting these breakthroughs because you're still dabbling with sin in your life. So if it's pornography, take your phone and throw it against the wall. Yes. Oh no, but I'm not that radical. Well, then you'll stay where you are. Yo, 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 yo. Then linger there. Linger in your sin. And die. And die. But you've got to make some radical steps. Take your phone and break it. And trust the Lord that He will keep you strong. Say, I'm going to devote my body to one woman that God's going to give me. And only that one woman. I really hoard around. And then I met my wife and we made a commitment. And we held true to that commitment and we're still holding true to that commitment. And we trust God to keep us there. You've got to do certain things in your life. Not to obtain salvation. But it's logical. Lord, I don't... I, I, please keep my lungs healthy. Yes, Lord. That's a contradiction. Take the cigarettes and throw them away. And you know, you know why we hammer on the smoking? Listen, can I tell you something? There are people in heaven today who smoked. I'm not saying smoking keeps you out of heaven. But all those small things that you stop doing, it's just the next breakthrough, yes. the next breakthrough, yes. the next breakthrough. And remember, Jesus says, you've got to strive for holiness. So we've got to strive for that. We've got to work towards that. We've got to be obedient. That's why we do it. Look after your body. Look after your body. That's what it goes about. So guys, the job description is there that we've got to reach these nations. I want to tell you something. I want to scare you, but if you die for the gospel, for the sake of Christ, for the sake of His Word and His Kingdom. That's what a martyr is. You've died for that, for being obedient to Christ. Do you know that in this century alone, more people have died for Jesus than all the centuries before added up together? Do you know that every year, approximately 150,000 Christians are killed because they believe in Jesus? Did you know that? And if you're a Christian, that means it's your brothers and sisters because they believe in Jesus. 
There are countries where you are not allowed to tell people about Jesus. I want to tell you something. It's going to cost us our lives to spread the gospel to those unreached tribes. But you were prepared to die for a hit. This is a cause worth dying for.